Hello and welcome to the channel where we discuss medical topics and lifestyle. In today's video, we are talking about the symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency. We are certainly not going to be jumping into too much detail about the causes or the treatment or anything like that regarding vitamin B12, but rather the symptoms of it. And if you are one of the people that might be experiencing vitamin B12 deficiency, and essentially vitamin B12 deficiency is common, un underdiagnosed, so it's important to talk about it. Um, and it's likely to lead for more people being tested and treated for the condition the more we talk about it. So you might be one of them, I might be one of them. So let's, uh, let's talk about it, let's dive into the video. The reason why we're talking about vitamin B12 is because it's essential. It's essential for the production of red blood cells, it's essential for normal functioning of brain and the nervous system. There's another whole other video on that, but that's the summary of it. And deficiency can cause numerous symptoms. If you leave it for a long time, it can be easily missed, it can build up, it can develop slowly over a few years, and then the signs can show up and problems can arise. B12 occurs naturally in animal products such as meat, fish, milk, and eggs, but it isn't easily absorbed. So the whole point of B12 and how we are meant to easily absorb it and readily more absorb it is by having a good balanced diet, a healthy bowel, plenty of stomach acid, and the presence of a special protein in our bodies called intrinsic factor to have a good chance of maintaining optimum levels. So millions of people in the UK and worldwide struggle with one or more of these, and it puts them at risk. So this is the general summary of what it means to optimally absorb vitamin B12 and not be deficient. But some people have an issue with one of these four categories. We made a whole other video on this, but this is the summary of it. Now let's jump into the actual signs and symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency. So the first thing to arise is an abnormal blood finding, which means anemia, essentially. And more specifically, it's a term called megaloblastic anemia. So what essentially happens is that vitamin B12 is essential for red blood cell production and normal function. And basically what happens is that the cell grows in a very abnormal way. The nucleus grows in an abnormal way, and this then limits the cell's ability to carry hemoglobin. And then it results in anemia, and then you get the classic signs of anemia and symptoms of anemia, such as fatigue, such as palpitations, headaches, feeling faint, tired all the time, and things like that. So that is something that can occur. But it's also very important to note that you can get signs and symptoms without actually being anemic. So without actually seeing that you're anemic on the blood test, you can still have signs and symptoms. So it's very important to keep that in mind. Continuing on with signs and symptoms, we start to go into the cognitive side of things and the mental side of things as well now. So other, other signs and symptoms are anxiety and depression. So it can worsen it or it can trigger mood disorder as well. So this is something important to keep in mind. Um, the other thing is that the eyesight can change a little bit, so you can get a little bit of blurred vision, um, you know, not seeing, not seeing right, funny vision. So a lot of vague symptoms, actually, that can mirror a lot of other syndromes and disorders. So it's very important to keep an open mind when it comes to B12, and that, hence why it's the reason why it's so underdiagnosed. And probably, more than likely, um, a lot of people are experiencing B12 deficiency and might not know it because of those four things that we mentioned at the start of the video. And as a matter of fact, the guidelines for investigating and diagnosing vitamin B12 deficiency are changing in the United Kingdom. So feel free to have a little Google and research that on your own time as well. Now, moving on even more so, we start to enter the neurological side of things with signs and symptoms. And this is where things actually get bad and interesting. Bad, I mean, is because if vitamin B12 deficiency is prolonged, then it slowly starts to become irreversible. So the earlier signs of neurological issues can be muscle weakness, pins and needles, numbness, balance and coordination issues, but they can then complicate things even further. So it's very important to diagnose it early on. And quite often, it rarely gets to being so, so rare and irreversible in the sense that it's one of the blood tests that you do look for if you start to have these vague symptoms, but it can cause things like temporary infertility, heart conditions, and complications in pregnancy later on. So it's important to test for. Now, vitamin B12 is stored in the liver and the storage pools are actually very, very vast. So they can last for many years, about for three, four years. So these um, irreversible complications really shouldn't be creeping up on us overnight. So just keep that in mind, not to scare you. And one of the craziest complications, actually, because vitamin B12 is important for myelin formation in your nervous system, it's subacute combined degeneration of the spinal cord. So basically what happens is you get demyelination 
and then you get an ataxic gait, paresthesia, impaired positional and vibrational sense. Really, you start to look quite, quite abnormal. So what is actually the game plan for vitamin B12 deficiency? So ultimately, what you need to do is you have to have a high index of suspicion. So yes, there can be signs and symptoms that you can experience, but there are also a few risk factors that put us in some sort of a category where we can suspect that somebody might be having these signs and symptoms can actually be a result of B12 deficiency. So one of them is being elderly, about the age of 65. So um, about one in 30 young adults may be affected, one in 25 in middle age, and as many as one in five over the age of 80. A diet low in B12, so that's that's not good. So at least one in 10 vegans is thought to be deficient. So it's vital that all vegans take supplements, regularly consume B12 fortified foods, such as plant-based milk, soy products, and cereals. If you're vegetarian, or um, you know, have any interest in this, I'll put a link down down below. There could be a family history of it, autoimmune history of it. So if there's things like celiac disease, thyroid problems, type one uh, diabetics, and then also certain medication can provoke you to have it. There can be a risk factor there. So certain anti-seizure medications, antacids impacting the acid of the stomach that we mentioned at the beginning of the video, metformin as well, and also surgery surgery and radiotherapy. So if you had surgery to that part of the bowel that absorbs vitamin B12, which is the terminal ileum, the last part of the small bowel, then that can be a problem as well. And if you've had radiotherapy as well. So make sure to get your B12 into you because it's healthy, it's good. You're not going to go on well overnight, but if there are vague symptoms happening, speak to your doctor, get it checked out, do a blood test. I hope you learned something in this video. It's nice to make it. Please like and subscribe for more. It really, really helps the channel. Leave a comment in the section below and we'll see you in the next one.